Welcome back to DBL. A Halloween horror story that you would only see on the big screen came true for a Texas family. Felicia Ruiz was lured to a fake Halloween party only to be attacked and killed. 20 years later, we have a look at the case in DBL's True Crime Chronicles. Just 17 years old, Felicia Ruiz had her whole life ahead of her. She was a good student. She, she was always home on time. It was October 1999. Felicia was approached by one of the largest and oldest Hispanic street gangs. She just flat told us as they were trying to get her to join the Latin Kings. In fear, her parents pulled her out of high school. However, Felicia still kept in touch with her friends and was invited to a Halloween party. You could see she was kind of excited and she, she, she finally laid it out. She says, Dad, can I go to a party? Her protective parents were hesitant, but they said yes, a decision that will later haunt them. She said, I love you, Mom. And I said, I love you too, Mommy. And she got in the car and drove off into the night and that was the last time we saw her alive. An open field near a vacant lot, perfect for a Halloween party. But when Felicia got here, there was no party. It was all part of a sick plan. Felicia was attacked by three people and stabbed to death. I mean, I can't imagine her laying out here that long. Nobody to help her. And she laid there and I don't know, they said it took like seven minutes for her to bleed out. Police caught two of the three suspects, Jay Farrell and Lisa Huerta. They're in jail, but pin the blame on Jesus Salazar. Jesus was Lisa's boyfriend at the time. Felicia's mom believes it was jealousy that led to her daughter's death. She told Jesus, if you love me, you'll prove it by killing her. The killing was brutal. He was, if you constantly the Police know Jesus is responsible, but can't find him. I can tell you where he isn't. And he's not in the United States. We're actively tracking him. It's, it's a continued ongoing investigation. Police believe he escaped to his hometown in Venezuela. It's not fair that he, that he lived here and he murders an American girl and then he goes back to Venezuela and gets protected. 20 years later, her family isn't giving up. He, he's gonna get caught, so he better start looking over his shoulder because it's, justice is coming. And earlier this morning, Tori, Al, and I spoke with an investigative reporter who covered this case. Take a look. We are joined now by reporter Grace White at our sister station, KHOU in Houston. So, Grace, a very disturbing case. 20 years later, are police any closer to finding the main suspect, Jesus? You know, they have gotten several tips. One came in a few years ago in the form of a picture that surfaced on social media. It had Jesus Salazar front and center. He was smiling, holding a beer in his hand. And again, it came from social media. Investigators have said throughout their uh, work on this case, they had two jobs. One was to locate him, one was to arrest him. So they feel like that picture, they've been able to locate him. And certainly now they're working to arrest him and bring this family justice. Wow. That kind of leads to my next question. And I uh, I guess maybe you kind of answered it. How did the police find out that he's in Venezuela? And just, how, I can't imagine, but how do the parents feel about all of this? It's so incredibly difficult. Venezuela is Jesus Salazar's home country, so investigators believe he has a network of friends and family there that can support him. They do know that years ago, after this all happened in 1999, that his father flew from Venezuela to pick Jesus up in Miami and fly him back to that country. So they believed that he was there all along. But then again, a few years ago, when this picture surfaced on social media, they were able to track him, and they tell us there's still tracking him actively now. Wow. Wow. Well, uh, this story was featured on Tegna's True Crime Chronicles podcast this week. I want to know, we all know why it's important to keep this story alive. What are some good ways to do so? Social media, podcasts, what do you think, Grace? Yeah, I think um, this mom is really my inspiration. She's never given up hope and fighting for justice for her daughter. She continues to talk to, to reporters across the country. And I think social media, uh, knowing that that tip a few years ago, the biggest break in the case came from a viewer, came from social media. Wow. I think that is the biggest thing we can all do. And I'll never forget what this mom told me. She said, Grace, this was the last thing I said to my daughter before she closed the casket at her funeral. She said, I promised her 
I would find justice and find the people who did this to my daughter. Wow, Grace, I have chills. Uh, that statement is uh, every parent's worst nightmare, and she too is my inspiration, and we pray Absolutely. that she gets justice. Thank you so much, Grace. If you want to read more on this case, go to khou.com and to listen to the podcast search True Crime Chronicles on the Stitcher app or your favorite podcast player.